on average in the United States, over 95% of the people that American school children learn about are white men. And if you happen to be a white male, then that, you know, that makes you feel good. That positions you, that makes you feel like, hey, I can do anything too. But if you're not, then that can call into question who you are and where you're going in life and what you can reasonably expect to accomplish in your life. My name is Michael Boulware Moore, the founding president and chief executive officer of the International African American Museum here in Charleston. Well, having somebody who has been a part of history, it's been easier for me to track my history and it, that's been tremendously powerful to me. And you know, my great-great-grandfather was Robert Smalls who was here in Charleston and on May 13, 1862, commandeered the Planter, which was a Confederate gunboat at the time, a uh, transport ship, and sailed past the five forts out to the Union blockade to freedom. African American young people need to grow up knowing that there are people who have achieved enormous things, and sometimes at tremendous odds, but have done great things, and they need to feel a connection to those people, if for no other reason, to help position them in their minds to do great things as well. Having our history bookended in the period of enslavement, you know, that, that, that doesn't create that same kind of an experience. And so it's up to us to tell these stories. The museum is designed to really tell the story of African American history in a way that really has, has not been told. I mean, right over my shoulder here is, is the site, the former Gadsden's Wharf. The Smithsonian African American Museum said that there are only a few really sacred sites of African American history in this entire hemisphere, and that Gadsden's Wharf, where our museum is, that, that's one of them. You know, Charleston is a spot where almost half of all Africans who came to this country came, and that spot on Gadsden's Wharf, where our museum will be, is the spot where we think about 40% of all Africans took their first steps. And so for us it's a real sacred space and we want to do honor to those people who took their steps there. We want to tell the story of not just the labor that they brought but the technology, the ingenuity. The rice industry in this country was little to nothing before the Africans came here and brought that technology. Charleston was the richest city in the United States for over a hundred years because of the ingenuity, the labor, the efforts of the Africans who were brought here. So we want to tell that story. The museum is going to be uh, have a number of, of different sort of sections. Uh, it'll be bookended on the side closest to the water. There will be a section called Atlantic Connections. There'll be some louvers on the windows that will point people toward Fort Sumter and out into the ocean and toward Africa. There'll be content in that area that will talk about some of the countries, some of the cultures, some of the people who came here. Through the middle of the museum, there'll be all sorts of exhibits, both permanent and traveling. On the end, facing toward Charleston, there'll be a really rich and dynamic family history center. We've got the number one genealogist who focuses around African American uh, genealogy working with us, and someone will have an opportunity to walk in, maybe not knowing much of anything about their history, and walk out knowing not only about their history, but then through DNA testing have an opportunity to really trace their heritage back uh, to Africa. Where there are opportunities to engage with local African American companies, I mean, I am certainly uh, committed to doing that. You know, our architect of record is a company called Moody Nolan, an African American architecture firm. Uh, our landscaper who is not only creating the landscaping but a very, very important memorial to our African ancestors uh, on the ground floor um, is one of the leading um, African-American landscapers, Walter Hood. In building this, we look to partner um, with African-Americans when and where we can. I've had sort of a firewall in my personality. You know, one side has been focused on business, has been focused on, you know, marketing and those kind of things, but then this whole other side of me that's focused on social justice, on, on African-American history, and trying to move our people forward. You know, I, I know that my great-great-great-great-grandmother came, you know, right here through 
you know, through Gadsden's Wharf. And so for me, when I go down to that site, um, it's just tremendously, um, it's just powerful to, to know that and to have that sense of connection. I've had friends, you know, with European backgrounds who came through Ellis Island and, you know, that, that space doesn't really do much for me because I don't have any, you know, I don't have a connection there. But I think, I think the museum and where we are at Gadsden's Wharf, I think it can serve that purpose and that people will be drawn here, uh, you know, to go see that, to experience that, to pay homage to their ancestors. Thank you.